So today I wanted to talk about Tracer and I found Sureform playing Tracer, one of my favorite players, and this is honestly one of the best games I've seen as Tracer in a long time. I think he has like a 75% kill participation in this game. Yeah, there's just a lot to learn about Sureform playing this character. Um, anyways, as we see right here, we're just going to get straight into this. Um, he uses his blinks to get right behind the enemies. That's kind of what you want to do as this character. For the most part, just use your blinks to get either on the high ground or get behind the enemies. Whatever, you know, kind of depends on the map, but try to do that for the most part. Get a lot of your ult charge really quickly and then go for a pick when your team finally goes in. That's, a that's essentially what you kind of have to do with this character. Uh, one thing I want to say about Tracer that's actually pretty important as well, though, is that you can actually play her on offense and defense pretty well. On offense, I think she works a little bit better because, of course, you can get picks like that. You can get a ton of spam poke. You can, you know, just use offensively um, just a lot of her mobility a lot better. Um, but even on defense, she works pretty good and we're going to see him doing that. And overall, she's actually been one of the best characters to main ever she's always been good in every single meta so if you want to pick up a main i think tracer is honestly probably the best one in the entire game you know it's arguable but i think he's definitely at least a good pick to try to do now, as far as the blinks go a little bit, we see him often using, you know, one or two blinks, but usually tries to keep at least one of those things. Um, I see a lot of people that just use their blinks whenever it comes off cooldown to just try to get in closer. That's not really a great idea. I mean, if you can just walk up and shoot them or get close and then blink and shoot them, that's for the most part a little bit better. Um, he always tries to have at least one or two, unless, you know, he's going all the way out in the boonies, then he can use them all. Um, but he usually tries to have at least one or two so that he can just, you know, get in there. But if something goes wrong, he can get out. And for the most part, you don't really see Surefur dying way too much. He saves his blink a ton, and it pays off for him quite well. Um, as far as the recall, he just essentially uses it whenever his HP is low, or whenever, you know, he's gonna die. Not really way too much to talk about that. No, no advanced stuff with that. It's, it's just kind of generally on what he does. But yeah, I think especially saving his blinks is what gives him the upper hand in a lot of situations, even against the other Tracer. Anyways, at the beginning right there, and even a little bit later on, we saw him especially trying to get high ground, um, getting free poke at the enemies, and he early on got a kill on the enemy Mercy, and then on the enemy Soldier, and then on a few other people. Um, it gives you opportunities to one-shot squishies a lot if you're on the high ground, and especially if you're on the high ground behind enemies. So just try to put yourself into situations like that. Um, for the most part, you don't really want to go in way too much before your team gets there. I mean, if, if it's a really big open map and you see someone by themselves, of course, go for that. But otherwise, you just kind of want to go to the supports the second that your team starts to engage. And if you do that, it makes it so that the supports have to focus on you, Instead of your team you're probably going to be able to get a kill and your team should be able to win because you know you're up a kill plus they didn't have healing on their own uh, tanks the whole fight yeah that's kind of how this character works and if you're really good as her it can just kind of go like that and that's how this kind of went of course using the ultimate to finish off the Arissa. if you do happen to get to you know low ground and you can't get to high ground it's a good idea to just hit the tanks next to you you don't have to worry so much about always killing the enemy supports it's fine if you can only get the enemy tanks. Of course, do try to prioritize them, um, but even if you have to use all your blinks all the time, sometimes it's better to just shoot the enemy tanks and then, you know, go after the supports once you have a few blinks, so then you're a little bit safer. Um, I guess some, you know, other stuff, you know, again, spamming at the enemies, trying to do everything like that. I have all these tips in the description, or at least the majority of them, so that's why I'm trying to read through them and see what I've already covered. Um, one thing that I think you should try to do um, is just kind of use your ult whenever you have the chance to get a kill with it. The only time that I want to say that you should save your ult is if you see, like, you know, you have a Zarya on your team that just says her ult's almost ready or a Reinhardt. Other than that, just kind of use it because it's one of those ults that charges so quickly that you're honestly wasting a ton of the value of it by not going for your ultimate. So even if it's just on a tank or even if it's just on, you know, really anybody, mainly a tank again, um, it's worth it to use your ultimate. All right there, saved it for a little bit, got a really nice ultimate on all of them. I think somehow some of them lived. Maybe that was a Lucio ult or something, um, but, you know, it gave enough damage so that the Zarya ult plus the Hanzo ult plus the Tracer ult could finally go through. And again, that's kind of the only time when you actually want to try to go for this. Um, right here we see overextending a little bit, but it's a good idea because it does allow for him to just spawn camp. When you're catching the point, you do just kind of want to spawn camp, get early kills, and just make so that they can't really get onto the point. Uh, instead of just trying to fight on the point, because fighting on the point doesn't work for you way too well. Again, something else that I want to say about, you know, during his offense is that Shofar often used kind of weird, unconventional ways to get around to the enemy backline, and he always went different ways. Going the same way every single time, while it can work, you know, they're going to get used to it. They're going to kind of know where you're going to be, and it kind of hurts, and, you know, there's everything like that. Um, and then I guess one final thing I want to say is that, of course, you know, do focus the supports unless you can't get to them, um, and as well make sure to just hit the enemy tanks if you're next to them and there's nothing else that you're doing. And anyways, right there, we saw on defense, he went to Widowmaker, but I'm going to cut that out because, you know, we're talking about Tracer here. Uh, he did do that because on first point on this map and quite a few maps, I feel like on defense, the map's just too far away. Tracer really just can't get to the enemy backline because they're way too squished up. 
and that's just kind of how it goes and sometimes you might want to switch out this character um, in those situations and as well I think one of his teammates wanted to play Tracer so he switched off to let him do that so there were all those reasons but anyways we're back to playing Tracer again um, and I guess as well he had a really good angle as Widowmaker on that point but you can see that you know you do want to make sure to switch on switch off that's kind of a good idea um, right here of course his team wins the team fight a little bit you know I think they just get one or two kills but then they follow it up they keep chasing they keep getting more damage does a little bit of damage to the Winston until he has enough blinks to go after the Mercy again not over committing way too much just going after whoever's close enough until he can I guess overcome a little bit because he has enough blinks and there we go um as well i want to say that during this match on defense he's actually playing dive comp still his entire team is so that's the thing you might want to keep in mind is that you want to play dive on tracer even on defense and just kind of counter dive so you wait for the enemy team to kind of blow their load to go in a little bit and then you counter dive on them as quickly as possible try to take out their tanks uh mainly try to take out their back line like their supports um, and that's kind of what happens. I think for the most part on defense, what you want to do is just really wait for your own tanks to go in, get a lot of the enemy's attention, and then try to just go after the supports um, and make sure that people aren't really going after you. And that's kind of how it goes with Tracer and how you should be kind of thinking about playing this. Um, you should be the person that people are kind of ignoring because they don't know where you are. You got around behind the enemies and then you get to be able to kill them. And you want to go in exactly when your tanks go in, um, but from a different angle. Because if you go in from the same angle, you might get picked off and it'd be kind of bad. Um, but at the same time, if you go in before your tanks go in, you're just gonna, again, maybe go one for one, but it's not really worth it. So, you know, <laughs> do kind of wait a little bit. Again, right here, we see more staggering. He waits a little bit right here until he can get the perfect situation to kill someone, but unfortunately couldn't one clip them, so he backs off. Uh, he plays really safely and makes sure that, you know, if he thinks that it's not gonna really work out for him, he backs off and waits for another good situation because often that's kind of how this character works. You have to wait for good situations, but when they do show up, it's completely worth it for yourself. All right, there we saw an ulting mercy. Against ulting mercies, you really can't do way too much. Um, one thing that we do see that he kind of does, though, is do a lot of damage to the enemy tanks. Oftentimes, when a, um, when a mercy is ulting, she's going to overextend a ton. And by she, I mean she and her entire team. And for the most part, her tanks are going to overextend a lot. So, if you guys can just collapse on the tanks, ignore the mercy, and maybe ultimate to finally finish them off, and then force the mercy to either come down for res or to just back up, both of those are good situations for you, and you can, of course, one-clip the Mercy if you can. And one thing about the tanks is that you can actually two-clip them often, which is complete headshots, or one-clip them with help of your teammates. So, like, you know, if you get a one-clip headshot plus a ton of Genji damage plus, you know, some support damage or whatever else, that can all kill tanks really quickly. You kind of have to remember that this character actually is a tank buster, but she gets countered by all the tanks. Like, all the tanks can kill her pretty easily, but if she's in a situation where they aren't really going after her, then she can kind of tank bust. Um, so, you know, that, that's kind of how that goes. Again, right here, she's a good situation to hit the Zarya, but figures out that it's time to back out. Even if she's not low, or I guess even if Shurfor is not low, he'll still back out with his E. If it's not really a great situation, you know, even if he's at full health. And that kind of works out for them right here. I think they get another pick. Walk up again, try to shoot this guy. Um, he sees that his supports, and just kind of everyone on his team is really far back. So if he went all the way through the enemy backline by himself, he'd kind of be by himself. He'd die probably and it wouldn't work out way too well. So for the most part, when your team's pushing up, you push up from a different angle. But when your team's playing really defensively, you kind of just want to stay kind of next to them um but again to the side or something like that you don't really want to stay way too much next to your team unless you just happen to have a situation where you're up one then sometimes you can stay right next to your team just try to dive on the enemy tanks with your own tanks out damage them and win like that um but that's mostly when you're like up a person <laughs> all right here we see again you know he's pushing up sure four is just <laughs> stomping them for the most part and for the most part if you are playing someone like tracer you don't really want to actually try to spawn cap the enemies unless you either have something like a winston helping you out or unless you have something like a zen or if you know that only one of the enemies is actually going to be at their spawn so let's say you just barely got a kill you know only one person's going to be there you go to their spawn and kill them again that's when it's really worth it for you. And on defense, spawn camping is especially important because it allows so that you can essentially get an extra like 30 or 40 seconds off the enemy team because they're gonna have to back up, wait, of course, wait for the death timer. All that stuff is gonna be kind of hard. And in the first place, they had to wait for you to just, I guess, wait for their teammate to get up to their team. Uh, he just kind of finishes it off right here. Sure for, you know, he's styling a little bit. He's, he's killing everyone a little bit. And yeah, essentially, you know, just finishes it off this final point. Um, and one thing about this as well is that during this game, the enemies finally switch to a Hanzo, which actually can one-shot you pretty easily. Um, but if you see someone like an enemy Hanzo, just don't really actually go after them. Go after the supports instead. Try to avoid them. Try to stay out of their line of sight um, because it, it can be kind of hard. You can just get randomly one-shot against somebody like a Hanzo or a Widow. 
So just don't put yourself in situations where you have to 1v1 these characters. You can, um, and you want to try to get close, I guess, to do it. But again, it's really risky. And for the most part, especially on defense, it's better to just take the really safe option and go for the after, go after the enemy support almost all the time, unless the situation asks for something differently. Anyways, as always, guys, thank you all for watching. That's all I'm going to say. Again, I think Show 4 is probably one of the best tracers. I know that there's effect and a ton of other players playing this character. Um, and Top 500 is just filled with Top 500 tracers. But, I don't know. I thought this was a good gameplay of them. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see new videos like this in the future. And please, tell me what character you want me to talk about in the future. Or, tell me how you've ranked up with Tracer. You know, what strategies you've used. And what has really worked for you in the past. So we can kind of share that knowledge with everyone. Anyways, as always guys, thank you all for watching. And, have a wonderful day.